Hi everyone, we are at Jay Cook State Park, just south of Duluth, Minnesota, which has a mixture of evergreen and deciduous forests. Um, and you can imagine that the mixture of evergreen and deciduous forests has a pretty big effect on the organic horizon or the protective layer of soil. And we're gonna see a little bit about that today. Um, this park has some unique impacts. We get lots of use from residents of Duluth, Minnesota, which has about 100,000 people. Um, but a lot of people come up from Minneapolis. So I'm going to just show you a few impacts that recreation has had on some of the resources here at Jay Cook. Hi everyone, so Thanks. we are at what's called the Swinging Bridge in Jay Cook State Park. And a couple things that I want to note here, this is a really high use area. Um, and what that means is that there's, good, there's a lot of people who come here. So if you can see, there's this nice sidewalk here to concentrate use. It's a hardened surface um, and it's here because they wanted to mitigate soil impacts. Um, a couple other things to note about some of the planning here. Um, you can see that there's relatively high vegetation um, kind of all around the sidewalk area. Um, and that is also uh, planned to prevent people from going off of the sidewalk and creating soil issues. Um, so we're gonna go to the other side of the bridge where the um, impacts on soil are uh, pretty obvious. So I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so we are slowly making our way across the bridge, trying to maintain a six foot dif uh, distance from the folks in front of us. Um, but a couple things I wanna note here, like where we live here, this is a relatively scenic area. So it's gonna see a lot of use. So that's one of the reasons why um, so many people come here. Um, another really important thing to note is that there's a parking lot, probably about 200 feet behind us. Um, so this is just a high use area um, where a lot of people like to come see. And again, you can see all these people in front of us. And this is what it looks like. Okay, so where we are here, um, some pretty obvious uh, evidence of uh, soil compaction. Um, so here you see standing water, it rained this morning. Um, that probably is gonna take a long time to steep down. Um, you can imagine that people are gonna be walking over this and causing more impacts. Um, here we see some exposed tree roots kind of all around us. Um, we're probably about 20 feet away from the end of the bridge, so you kind of imagine this um, level of impact here. Um, and also one thing I'm going to note that doesn't really have to do with soils per se um, is that there's lots of rocks around here. And you can see that these rocks are, there's some lichen, um, not a lot. Um, but you're going to see impacts to rocks as well. They're not going to have as much lichen or moss around areas like this that are pretty high use. So a couple things to note here, we're on this main trail, which is pretty big. Um, and a couple things I wanted to note, right? So if you look down here, um, in these kind of compacted soils, only certain types of vegetation are going to be able to kind of thrive in these areas. Um, and oh, wow. So there's a, here's a dead snake. That's kind of cool. Okay, that's, I got sidetracked there. Um, but I'm gonna go down to a social trail this way. So social or user-created trail is a type of trail that um, a manager didn't intend to be there. And I wanted to show you some of the erosion that's occurred um, in part because of all the use here. Um, so you can see this is pretty steep, so lots of water is gonna go down it, um, and that's gonna cause lots of erosion. Um, and remember from the textbook that, you know, the, depending on the texture of the soil, its porosity, um, its moisture, all sorts of different factors are going to influence um, how quickly it erodes and the forces that need to be at play for it to erode. Um, but again, I wanted to show you these exposed roots and some evidence of erosion here at Jacob. Okay, we are going up the hill right now. This is my daughter Mirabelle. And you can see this fence here. This is to prevent folks from going down to the water and you can see that there is an old social trail there. I imagine that the managers here wanted to put this fence up to prevent future erosion, but maybe also for safety issues and people falling. So I'm shipping. walking down the beach here at Jay Cook State Park on the St. Louis River. And one thing that I wanted to note is that, you know, not all erosion is from recreational use. Uh, we see here, we're at the uh, beach of a river and in 2012, this area flooded really, really badly. One of the worst floods in history here, um, or recorded history. And it caused, you know, a lot of these um, exposed roots. And so you're gonna see 
um, exposed routes, you're going to see things that might look a little bit like recreational impacts um, that aren't because it's just a, a natural process of erosion. And um, what humans do in terms of impacting the recreational resource is that, you know, they might speed up the process or make it erode in places that it wouldn't naturally erode. Um, so I just wanted okay, to so note right that. now we are off the main trail and we're kind of on a small spur. And I wanted to note a couple important things. Um, perhaps obviously, you know, if you've recreated much, um, most of the recreational impacts on trails happen within about the first quarter mile. And um, once you go further um, in, you're going to see less impacts. Um, so, you know, we obviously see exposed roots here. That's because of how thick the vegetation is here in this forest. Um, it looks like there are some super cool mushrooms here. They're very, very pretty. Um, so this is a, a healthy, healthy soil right here that has um, some good mycelium running through it that can, that the mushrooms can grow. And I'll just, uh, right now I'll kind of dig deep right here, not super deep, but just to show you what the organic layer looks like here. Um, you know, because this is a mixed forest of evergreens and deciduous trees, you're going to see some um, decomposed leaves. Uh, and you're also going to see um, like cedar, you're going to see other things. Um, but I just want to show you what the uh, horizon, the organic horizon looks like when you just get off trail. Um, you know, you can see and find really cool things. And I won't disturb this mushroom, but I just want to give you a look at that. Okay, everybody, so before we leave, I wanted to make a few important points. Um, you know, what really matters when you're thinking about soil impacts, but all other impacts to um, recreational resources, um, are this going to be the social and ecological context of the site that you're at. So this setting here has really high use density. You know, we saw in particular areas really large soil impacts, um, and we saw in other areas less soil impacts, um, and that's arguably because of the use density. Um, also, activity type really matters. So most people here, uh, at least this time of year, are hiking. Um, and the trails that we went on, um, that was the only kind of activity that's allowed. Um, so that's really important too. So I really wanted to note though that the social and ecological context of where you're going to work um, matters when you're trying to understand soil impacts, but also impacts to other uh, resources as well, such as water, vegetation, wildlife, that kind of stuff. So it's going to look different everywhere and that's one of the things that makes wildland recreation ecology so exciting.